guys, every video on the internet about how to build bigger abs is all about exercises for the abs. But what if you actually took it back and thought to yourself, why don't a lot of exercises really stimulate the abs to the degree that you want? Now, of course you'll always get a lot of burn because a lot of people do lots of reps of lots of different ab exercises. They do lots of variation of lots of different exercises. But what happens to a lot of people, and it may not happen to you, but it happens to a hell of a lot of people, is you have very, very tight hips, the lower back can hurt a lot when they do abs, but they still keep training their lower abs, or they still keep training their upper abs. Now, what I'm gonna do is take things back a little bit and say to you, where should you really start? Because one of the biggest things about training is about being able to control the muscle you're trying to work. And realistically, if you can't control a muscle under slow tempo, you have no right doing a, an exercise through a fast tempo. So somebody lying on a bench, flying their lower legs up and down for lower abs, is that really gonna be training the lower abs? If you don't have lower ab control, then you're predominantly gonna be using the hip flexors, rect fam, iliopsoas, and you're gonna literally get a lot of burning down there, build up lactic acid, but you're not necessarily gonna be contracting the lower abs as hard as you possibly can. Now, with the lower abdominals, let's start there. You can't 100% isolate the lower abdominal fibers. What you can do is you can preface the lower abdominals. So if we're going to lower our legs away from us, for example, if you don't have control over your lower abdominals, the tension is going to move somewhere else. And this is why you see people doing hanging leg raises off of cable stations such as this. And they're literally going up and down, up and down. Either their grip gives in, or their lower back gives in, or their hips give in. But the lower abs, they get a bit of a burn, but they're not the number one thing that actually fatigues. But if you wanted to develop your lower abs, shouldn't the lower abs be the number one muscle group working? Okay? So what I do with every single person that I work with, and it's the same for every other muscle group, learning muscle control, learning how to lock yourself down, and learning how to train a muscle, or what I call extremity execution. Initiate and contract a muscle from the extremity, and then bring it all the way through. Now, for a lot of people, when you do lower abdominals, when you lower your legs away from you, say on a bench as I'm gonna do in a second, there will come a point that you lose tension. You lose tension because you're not strong enough. So what it makes sense to do is to train throughout a range of movement that you can actually maintain tension whilst maintaining a lower and uh, your lower back pressed onto the bench. So I'm gonna ask Gus for a second to just spin around so I can show you this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna lie on a bench. Now, I'm gonna show you what a lot of people do. Okay, so that's a lower abdominal exercise in a lot of people's eyes. You swing up and down, you get a bit of heart rate going, you feel the lower abdominals. Now interestingly, I've got a little bit, little bit of an achy lower back at the moment just from uh, a little bit of uh, tweaking when I was training. And automatically I felt that in my lower back. And because I didn't really have control over my lower abdominals, I was flexing and extending from the hips, but I didn't 100% have my abdominals. So let me give you the what you should do. If lower abdominals are something that you don't feel enough and you want to grow them, you've got to regress slightly and start from a, a real solid foundation. These might actually look very easy, but they're very, very hard. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna call them 5050, and as you get better, they're gonna be 4040, 3030, and then you can even do 2020, and that's tempo. So it's four down, four, back, four, four up. All right, so we're gonna put a very slight decline. The steeper the decline, the harder it's gonna be for you. So let's start off with a very, very basic level of the exercise. So, we're gonna hold on to the bench, drive a lower back into the pad. We're gonna lower down, holding, contracting, and squeezing the lower abdominals. Gonna lower down, and squeeze the lower abdominals. Now, that is an exercise, if you do it under a lot of control, and you take your legs down to the point at which your lower back feels like it's gonna lift, but you've still got tension in the abdominals, and then you squeeze the abdominal muscles and bring your legs back up, you're gonna be using the abdominals a greater percentage than any other of the, the, the hip flexor muscles. The fatigue is gonna build up very, very quick, 
I'm going to show you that with a 4040 or a 5050 tempo, that your abdominals are very, very weak. And to be honest, you know, if they start to shake a huge amount, you're actually very, very weak there. Now, mine will start to shake every time I start doing lower abdominal exercises. But as I start to get into them and my muscles fire up a lot more, then they stop shaking. So the first couple of rep sets that you might shake a little bit, and then as the neurological sequence starts kind of getting through, then you will find that they start to shake less and less and less. If for the full first session of doing them, they shake a hell of a lot just with three sets, then revisit that and the shaking will stop. A lot of shaking is weakness. And if you want to do things like deadlifts, squats, RDLs, any big compound movements, your lower abdominals need to be strong and your lower abdominals are very, very important when it comes to lower back health. So start off with 5050, develop control, and don't push through to any other lower abdominal exercises until you've nailed this first. Okay guys, so that covers lower abdominals. Now we're gonna look at upper abdominals. And it follows exactly the same thought process. Can you contract and control your upper abdominals from the extremity through to full contraction with actual deep contraction on the muscle. A lot of people can't. So when you see people throwing themselves up and down doing Rocky style abdominal training, what are they actually doing? Well, in most cases, a lot of people are flexing extending through the lumbar spine. Again, putting a lot of shear force through the lumbar spine and using a lot of momentum. If your knees are flexed nine times out of 10, just to get that hip flexion and come up, a lot of people, if they're just doing abs like flexing, there's no, a flexion and extension of the lumbar spine, uh, of the uh, spine. So that we're getting no actual full abdominal contraction. Now, you'll see a lot of people, I actually do like to do abdominals on the, on the ball. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't like to excessively stretch back. I mean, let's, let's look at where your um, rectus originates and then inserts. And realistically, what we're trying to get is length through here and then a contraction through there. What you get a lot of people doing from here is just excessively leaning back. But what we want to do is get this stretched, okay? So it's that. Now you can see my thumb right down to the pubis, right here, but to the sternum. So we, we want to get that short. So if I then transfer that into here, okay? All we want is there, and we want to shorten here. And obviously these are more of the upper fibers. So we have the lengthen, and then we're going to initiate and then we're gonna contract, and then we're gonna come back. Now it's not an excessive range of movement, as you'll see a lot of times. That excessive range of movement will come from the lumbar, okay, it's all excessive. You've got very little way of being able to recruit from here when you're overstretched. So what happens a lot of time is the movement comes from the hips, and it becomes, see that, becomes a mainly a hip movement. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna remember pubis, sternum, we're gonna extend back, and we're gonna go hands here, one, two, contract, 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 one, two, three, squeeze, contract, and initiate. Now, every time anyone does that with me, even when I slow them down to 3030 and even 4040, they're shaking so much, they can't initiate, they're used to using so many other muscle groups. And you gotta remember, a lot of people have problems with their lower backs. A lot of people, people have problems with tight hips and all that sort of stuff. But you've got to remember, the abdominals are very, very, very important. And we talk about a lot of core training that people do, a lot of isometric stuff, but how many people actually work the lower abdominals in, in kind of like flexion and extension and getting them lengthened and shortened and under control? At the only point, once you've got control, is then you can start bringing in a bit of speed and a little bit of load. The principles apply for the rest of the body, but don't limit them just to the rest of the body. Include the abdominals as well. I trust you, right? trust me. When I actually do my abdominals for um, compet competition, I do my lower abdominals and my upper abdominals, I don't really move very much further away from these exercises. Trying to bring in other fancy exercises is just like bringing in swing swinging dumbbell curls just because you want to use more load. You can use all the fancy exercises, but let's just remember this as well. When somebody's very, very lean, you'll see their abs. Now, if you want to develop the abs a little bit more, you've got to get better at contracting them, lengthen, shorten, mid-range, and make them strong. But 
when someone is very, very lean, that's how they got their abs, getting very, very lean. Building your lower abdominals is about getting stronger. So don't be kind of fooled by always watching people that have got shredded abs and saying these are all the exercises that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. The exercise pool for abdominals is actually very, very small, small, but people can create all sorts of exercises, but are they stimulating the abdominals to the degree that they're actually going to grow, develop, and support and structure and uh, support the spine? So give these two exercises a go, become very, very good at them. And realistically, in my opinion, you can develop onto other stuff, but make sure these are strong first and then you can have a bit of fun. Guys, if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's going to be lots more content coming. If you subscribe, you're going to be notified. Thanks for watching.